Welcome to a recorded version of the first part of the April 21st FOCUS Community Engagement Session number 2. FOCUS, which stands for the Future of Crystal Lake Library Under Study, is a community-wide effort to gather input and feedback from the community regarding different aspects of the future and possible options for improving library service. Tonight's presenters are Catherine I. Martins, Director of the Crystal Lake Public Library, and Joe Huberty, partner with Engberg Anderson Architects. Ms. Martins will begin tonight's presentation on the topic, Are We Future Ready? And now, Session 2A. Welcome, citizens of Crystal Lake. I'm happy that so many of you chose to join in this community conversation tonight. A long-standing question with respect to the future of our public library in Crystal Lake is where will our library building be located? The Crystal Lake Public Library opened its doors to the public in November 1913. The facility itself has been a challenge since the beginning. This slide shows you the history of our library's facilities and locations. In 1952, a library was built at 126 Paddock Street on land donated by the American Legion. Thirteen years later, that building was raised and a new, larger library was built. The original 1965 building has been added on to twice between 1965 and 1995, a 30-year span. The most recent work in 2007 was Project Shoehorn. Intended to be a temporary solution to our space needs, Project Shoehorn reconfigured and updated the interior space. The goal was to enable us to remain in the building for another five years without a major expansion. The Library Board has conducted three space needs studies since 1994. These studies consistently indicate a need for more than double the current square footage in order to meet the service goals of the library. The space needs study done in 1994 told the library board that the building should be 65,000 square feet. The board had the architect develop a master plan to eventually achieve that size. Because Crystal Lake was still in its growth stages at that time, the Library Board decided to do a Phase 1 addition and wait until population growth stabilized. The last addition to the Library Building was completed in the mid-1990s and brought the total size of the building up to 40,000 square feet. This chart shows subsequent space needs studies. Growth of Crystal Lake has now stabilized but the library building size has not yet caught up to the community it is here to serve. At various points in time, the issue of where should the library be located has come up. In fact, the referendum in 2004 was a proposal to build a new library at a different location. After that 2004 referendum failed, we formed a Citizens Library Advisory Committee to study options and conducted a public opinion survey. Both sources told us to stay at the current site and make do for now. In 2012, the state of Illinois offered a rare opportunity, public library construction grants. The library board decided to compete for these funds. Because of the feedback from the community to stay at the current location, we worked with our architect, Joe Huberty, on a plan for the current site. Here is the plan used for the grant application. It included demolition of parts of the current building and an addition for a total of 85,000 square feet, 230 parking spaces in a two-story parking structure to the east. This would be accomplished on the 3.3 acres of land owned by the library at that time. You will see on a subsequent slide that the parking and land do not meet city code requirements, so variances would be needed with this plan. There was $30 million available through the competitive grant process. 49 public libraries applied. 
Crystal Lake was not successful in obtaining this grant funding primarily because of our strong local economy. In the fall of 2012, soon after we learned we would not get a state construction grant, the Library Board and City Council met to discuss what now? The City Council tasked the Library Board with investigating all options. After that discussion, the City Council passed a resolution that we have shared on this slide. I'd like to quote a portion of that. The Library Board is to provide the following as part of any planning for a future expansion of the Crystal Lake Library Building. A report incorporating all alternatives the Crystal Lake Library Board reviewed as part of any future expansion, including the use of buildings made available because of the closing of any school buildings. The report shall include cost figures for each of the options reviewed. In order to compare sites, criteria needed to be established. The Library Board's Building Committee took on this project. The Building Committee, composed of several Library Board and staff members, as well as two City Council liaisons, worked with our architect Joe Huberty. The first parameter what size buildings and properties would we consider? The grant application served as a reference point for the maximum size, 85,000 square feet. We used a reduction by 10% as our minimum. The chart on the left shows the parking and land required for each of those sizes according to city building codes. Next, the committee established the evaluation criteria. These criteria were ranked by importance. The criteria are shown in the left-hand column, and the components to be evaluated are shown in the right column. In order to have consistency in the process, it was decided that Joe Huberty, our architect, would complete all the evaluation scoring. We wanted the process to be professional and analytical. The building committee recognized that as Crystal Lake residents, we could potentially have emotional biases associated with some of the properties. The plan used for the grant application, which was serving as our reference point, was also evaluated and scored using the same process. The goal of the process was to achieve a final number for each option that could be used for ranking. This final number is its value index. Here is an algebraic formula used to calculate the value index. Each criteria received an evaluation score. The evaluation score was multiplied by that criteria's importance factor to obtain a performance score. Performance scores were totaled, then divided by the estimated cost to do that project. The result, a value index. We also established preferred location zones. Ideally, the library is centrally located in its community. The current library location, at the center of the inner circle, is shown with a star. This map shows three concentric circles. The inside circle is the preferred zone, the further out, the less preferred. A 2012 demographic study done by District 47 reported a declining enrollment. There was speculation that District 47 might close a school, and so this was part of the assignment from the City Council. The school board intended to study a broad array of issues related to education within the district, some of which would impact the district's need for space. The planning study was anticipated to be completed sometime between the spring of 2014 and 2015 and they would not know until then if a school would be closed. Rather than wait two to three years for the conclusion of the study, I simply asked for the size of their buildings so we could determine if any fell within our 76,000 to 85,000 square foot parameters. On the left are the sizes of the buildings. Only two fell within our parameters, Indian Prairie and Hussman. The map shows the school locations. As you recall, the grant application was used as the reference point. 
That was considered site number one. In addition to that, 23 other locations were considered. Here is a list of the locations. In total, 39 options were evaluated. For example, Walmart, Renovate, or Walmart, Knock It Down and Build New would represent two options. The value index was used to rank our investigations. Here is a listing of the top 10 out of the 39 options evaluated. The Walmart, number one and number six, and Garden Fresh, number two, were deemed to be fatally flawed as they did not meet the criteria for the highest and best use of the land, depriving the community of valuable commercial real estate and the associated revenue opportunities. Numbers 3, 5, 9, and 10 were pursued with a developer, someone from outside Crystal Lake who was interested in developing a mixed-use property involving the library, senior housing, and retail. The developer considered the library a strong amenity for senior housing and a magnet for retail traffic. The library board saw it as an opportunity for our community bringing jobs to the area, improving a site, and potentially a lower cost option for a library. Despite many, many months of work and negotiations, none of these site options worked out. This took the library board back to number seven, the baseline grant concept, or number four, the current library site and purchase additional property to allow for surface parking versus the costly two-story parking structure. After 15 months of study and evaluation, the library board concluded that the library will remain at the current location and that additional adjacent properties were needed. This slide shows the current library parking and properties. If you are interested in reading the complete site comparison study, it is posted on our focused website under research documents. Going back to where will the library physically be located in the future? The answer is at its current location. With that part of our future decided, now it's time to think about other aspects of our library's future. What services and features are possible? Our architect, Joe Huberty, will cover that topic for us.